Yes, right. How are we, mate? All good? Not too uh, bad, time yeah. Of, time of isolation. Who's more bored, me or you? I mean, it's a toss-up, really, isn't it? But, <laughs> no, it's, everything's all right, mate. Everything's good. I'm just just uh, um, passing time reading and, and scouting and stuff like that online. So, yeah, all good, mate. When the, kid, when the kids ain't driving you mad, yeah? Yeah, he's in the front room going mental. So, hopefully, you don't barge in here. But, yeah, all good, mate. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Right, well, welcome to In The Box. Um, obviously, I've explained to you a little bit about what we're doing. Um, the videos will be going out shortly. One of the first people got on. Um, explain the concept to you. It's your dream 11 of players you've played with. Obviously, you had a fantastic career. Uh, played for some some you know real big clubs. Just before we go on to your uh, 11, just wanted to know what was, what was your sort of thinking uh, in selecting your 11? Have you gone for literally like, now, obviously, ideally, you go for the best players you've played with, but you, know, you, you would have played with some obviously some great players at Arsenal and stuff when you were younger. Then you had some good loans, yeah. then you went out to the States. Have you gone for Have you thought about it like with your managers head on? Have you gone for like, you know, thought about it almost tactically, or have you just gone for like, no, let's just get as many star names in there as possible? <laughs> no, no, to be honest, um, for me, when I chose the team, it's just the players that I've fought, yeah, along, along my career, um, yeah. who I fought were the best players to be honest. Um there's absolutely no doubts in any of the cho in any of the choices that I've uh, chosen. So yeah, no, no there weren't no like, oh actually what about that person? It's just like no, for sure him, for sure him, for sure him. So yeah, just just like that really. Nice, very decisive. Uh, I've had a few people on who have been like almost torturing themselves with decision making, but it sounds like yours is very clean cut and uh yeah, it sounds like you're ready to go. Right, start off then in goal. Who's in between the sticks? Uh, well, to be honest, I mean, it has to be Tom Heaton. Um, okay. Because, I mean, don't get me wrong, um, I played with some really good goalkeepers in my career. But yeah. I'd say Tom, because from a young age, we, play, we played for England together and um, I was always impressed by him. Um, yeah. And the way that he conducted himself, uh, the way he played, he was always a commanding presence as well. Um, very vocal, um, really gifted technically. He was he was just from a young age a really good goalkeeper. I know it took time for him to sort of kick on um, and what have you, but yeah, for me, absolutely no doubts in 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 that respect. I mean, there's other goalkeepers like I said I played with that I thought were really good, but yeah. I'm going for Tom. Um, Final answer, yeah. Final answer, final answer. Right, okay, yeah. yeah, so because obviously, when, when, he, when, you, when you played with him, then what, what sort of age was that at England? Because he would have been at Man United, right? Come through there. Yeah, yeah. So, um, we was under, I, I was under 15. I started playing for England under 16, so 14 and then 15. Yeah, so it was like under under 15 slash 16 um a long time ago now but yeah man, he was at, he was at he was at united and um he was class to be fair cool right he's in he's in goal um no qualms about that one didn't even mention anyone else so he's in you've gone with a back four uh we'll start off right back a bue a bue because when he came over um I was immediately impressed by him, not because initially, because he was playing as a winger when he first came over, um, like a wing back um, slash winger. But when you ran against him, um, he had this knack of um, winning the ball and nicking the ball, and and then it, if when he won it, he'd give it and he's off. So yeah. like as a, as a winger, that's a nightmare because. You know, first of all, you haven't beaten your your player. Um, then you got to chase yeah. them back. Then you got to chase them back. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it was a nightmare. And then when you've chased them back, you're knackered. But his fitness was a joke, so he'd be straight back in the back four, and you're there blowing. You get the ball, you just want to give it away until you get your breath back. Right? I just found with him, he was just a machine. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was a fantastic athlete. Um, and he went on to do really well. Yeah, no, of course, I was going to ask about that, because with him, like, towards the end of his Arsenal career, he came in for a bit of stick and stuff, but 
for for a while he, he you know he, he played up wouldn't god knows how many games he played and, and he was consistent and he was you know he was his top draw uh, for several seasons uh, did, did obviously he said he was impressed straight away when he came over did did you see you know uh, did you see that that would that would be the case that you know he'd get in the Arsenal team and you know make sort of the right back position his own for so long uh kind of i mean loren was obviously a very important player for arsenal um yeah. but different obviously different players um, yeah cool but i just felt like you know for someone who's heading towards the twilight of their career um in loren who did so well for the club you always need to refresh yeah. and a boy coming in for me was was the perfect choice um and he slotted in perfectly and, and, and played really well um immediately so cool. yeah I'd have, I'd have, i have no doubts about him being being a right back i haven't actually got my list up so okay. you might have to, you. Don't yeah. worry. I've, got, I've got it don't worry i've done me i'm right. prepared <laughs> <laughs> you're so sure about your team anyway i'm sure you'll remember him. right yeah okay he's right back in your team left back is Cal cliche yes yeah, so cliche again. We actually struck up a really good friendship um, when he joined, and again, like similar to similar to Emmanuel in a way, um, immediate impact, um, professionalism. What I noticed with all these boys as well is that they were super professional. Um, yeah. always doing extras, um, always in the gym, always stretching properly. They could all stretch properly. I know that sounds silly. Yeah, no, um, I was gonna, to be honest, mate, to, not, not to interrupt you, but I was going to ask about that because that's obviously, you know, I explained a little bit about earlier on, like, before we could start recording, like, that, you know, the main reason I want to do this is for a lot of younger players out there watching, um, yeah. you know, I'm sure they'll be bored indoors and they'll be watching this sort of stuff. And, you know, just, just I would just want to highlight, you know, in this, this but even better when they hear it from someone like yourself who was around, like, you know, top level uh, pros growing up. For me, to just highlight how important it is to, you know, you know, the other side of the game in terms of your off the pitch uh, activities and, you know, being professional when you're saying that obviously he, he was he was one of those, yeah? For sure. Uh, for sure. I mean, it even, it even influenced me the way that they were. Yeah. Because, you know, growing up here, when with your knockouts and all of that and playing football when you're growing up you just play football you don't think of stretching and stuff like that then you get to a, prof a professional environment and obviously it's introduced to you and it's, you know you embed that in your thinking yeah. um but they were relentless with it um and for me it was like an eye-opener in the sense that um you know is is that is what they're doing going to give you that extra which it does um yeah. And again, similar to Emmanuel, what an athlete. I mean, yeah. I remember actually being pulled in the office once um, by Neil Banfield. Yeah. And uh, he was saying to me, look at this. And I'm not a left back, but he's just showing me because it's the standard that the, the, the players are setting. And yeah. Clichy made a run all the way up. We're playing at Highbury against, I think it was Wolves, um, made a run all the way ran all the way back, nearly the same pace when we lost the ball, all the way back. Mm -hmm. And then he went again. And he was like, that's the standard. Um, clearly, you thought I was lazy. But, <laughs> 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 but yeah, no, what an athlete. And, and again, went on to do really well. And, yeah, no doubt yeah, no, about it. I think as well with him, he, he was like proper, like, you know, modern day left back, wasn't he? Like, so, and I think yeah. as well, the be the, probably the best compliment you can give him is the fact that, you know, with him coming through, that probably, uh, you know, gave Arsenal license to let Ashley Cole go to uh, Chelsea. You know, listen, I know Ashley Cole was probably one, of the, probably the best left back of our generation, or my sort of certainly my gener my generation. But you know, had they not had Clichy coming through, you know, they might have um, been more inclined to yeah. try other yeah, people. Yeah, so no, I'd, I'd, I'd yeah. say that was definitely a, a reason for it. Um, okay, right on to your centre halves. Remember who they are? Can't remember. <laughs> we have here. got we have got Sol Campbell and Martin Kyo. Yeah, all right. So Sol Campbell. Uh, I don't think I need to speak too much about. No, you don't. That's the thing you don't really. So maybe just something different yeah. that we've not, maybe not heard before. Yeah. So Sol. Uh, you know what? Actually, what uh, I was gonna what I was gonna ask was obviously like I say, uh, the, the viewers and listeners and 
and fans at home and their Arsenal fans or whatever sort of football fans, they'll all know like you know that these two are you know, speaking themselves like they play for England and you know, they were probably in the top, you know, to use the name of uh, t- top twenty centre arse of the Premier League generation. I'm sure they yeah. both comfortably yeah. be in there. So no, that's I was just gonna ask yeah. like, what's what's the difference? You'd you'd have obviously played with a lot of centre arse throughout your career, whether it be at Arsenal and then uh, when you moved on and stuff. What would have been the difference? Like what made them obviously they've made it into your team uh, uh, for a reason. What was what for you, like what was the big difference? What made them like top tops? You know what I mean, like I mean there's some people, mate, there's some players that just impact you straight away. Um mm-hmm. I remember in training we were doing one on ones, um and I was really good at one on ones. And I remember, I remember, mate, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I was good at one-on-ones. Um, and I remember it was me and Soul. There was like a, there was like maybe 10 of us and I was doing one-on-ones with Soul. And, mate, I couldn't get past him. Don't get me wrong, there were times I did in other <laughs> sessions. But in this particular session, mate, and I, I, I walked away from it and I was just like, nah, that's, that's the standard. Like, that's, yeah. don't get me wrong, Sol Campbell, in my eyes, in my eyes, as a defender, world class. Yeah, of course, you know? exactly. So you're up, against, but, you're up against one of the best probably in the world at that stage. Exactly. So, yeah, for me, it was just like, yeah, like he's just, he's just such a big player, such a commanding presence again. And, you know, a very intelligent person as well. He's a very yeah. smart person. Yeah, yeah. Um, we actually had a good friendship as well. So, yeah, yeah I'd have to say so on, yeah. on one That's side. That's the thing as well. Like, he, he, put, he, 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 was, he was good in the other box as well. He popped up with some goals, didn't he, as well? And I remember the, the one in the World Cup, I still still haven't probably got over that from 98 when he scored. Didn't he? Mate, he twice. Great. He's done he it twice. So against Argentina, Argentina, <laughs> and then... Obviously, Barcelona in the Champions League final. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, nah, listen, nightmare. But, yeah, so, yeah, so listen, goes without saying, big souls in there. Martin Keown, um, uh, you know, you hear a lot about him. Like, apparently, he was pretty tough on people in training. Can you remember that? Yeah. Uh, Martin was a very funny character um, off the pitch, always having a laugh and a joke. As soon as he stepped on a training pitch or on the... Um, in the stadium to play a game. Just a completely different person. Different and um, I remember in particular um, a situation in training where, um, I don't know, I just broke through into the first team and I think we are training for one of the next games. I think it was Middlesbrough in the semi-final of the League Cup at Highbury and um, I weren't putting it in enough. I was knackered. I can't remember why. We had a rough night, sleep and what have you. I, you know, don't know what it was that caused that. I can't remember that far back, but I remember going into training the next day, not really uh, um, having a great session and, mate, he just tore into me. Yeah. Which I probably needed, to be honest, because at that point, you know, I'd heard people say, oh, you know, you're you're so good, but you're going to be this, you're going to be that. Uh, and that definitely brought me down a peg or two. Yeah. Um, but he was right in what he did, you know, so... Um, yeah, he basically dressed me down in front of everyone and just told me, you know, you've got to put it in. I'm not having that, which is correct. Cool, right. So as a player, as a player, sorry, as a player, bundles of ability, um, a leader, a natural-born leader, um, good at everything. Like With my defenders, um, I like defenders to defend first. I know now it's more about attacking and what have you. Um, but for me, he was like a, he wanted to defend. Do you understand what? Like yeah, he yeah. wanted, so he got a kick out of it. Whereas I feel like there's a lot of defenders that can defend well, yeah. but they probably don't want to defend so much. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, he wanted it. He loved it. So he's in there as well. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I think um, it's probably a generational thing. I think, like, even for me, when I come through, like, there was, you know, players of his ilk, obviously not to his level, but players of his ilk who, like, really you could see that they literally, like, enjoyed defending as much as I enjoyed probably attacking or passing or, or whatever, you know. And I feel like even now, when I, you know, I'm, I'm doing some coaching and stuff and 
And I feel like you don't see that as much now. Everyone wants to be like a number 10 or a number eight or attacking player. Yeah. Or not make we don't, you know, you, you, you don't see many lads coming through now who get you know, as much enjoyment out of defending as they do attacking. So, Oh, yeah. I completely uh, see what you're saying there. Yeah. And I give right, a special mention. I give a special okay, mention there to Paul Robinson as well at Millwall. Okay, cool. Yeah, I know, he was well, another one. Great lad. Yeah, he was another one who I looked at and I thought, you know, you're you're one of them. You're one of those that loves to defend and yeah. a great person off the pitch as well. So just a little mention for him as well. Yeah, no, no problems with that. Uh, top man, Robbo, and myself. Um, great guy, and what career he had at. Uh, you know, a club close to us in uh, South East London there, Millwall. Right, yeah. that's your back four and your keeper done. We are going to move on to your centre midfielders. And to be fair, mate, I'm, obviously I'm hoping to get some, you know, some top pros on, on, on this podcast in the box. But I am feeling I'm going to go a long way to find a better centre midfield partnership than the team <laughs> we've got here. I can't even remember where I've put that. But you, yeah, have cool. got, you have got Patrick Vieira and Cesc Fabregas. So we will start off with Patrick, Big Pat. World Cup winner, European Championship winner, <laughs> Premier League titles, played at the biggest clubs. I mean, Can't say no more. Patrick Vieira, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, look, they, they obviously have, um, they have, like I say, them two, you know, they, they speak for themselves. But obviously, we'll start off with Pat. And like I say, the whole idea of this is to, Know, for younger players or listeners fans and listeners for to you know just find something you know maybe different that they've not heard before. Like what was he what was he like off the pitch? Because obviously we know about the player that he was on the pitch. Like what was he like off the pitch? It was very quiet. Quiet. It was very quiet. Yeah, quiet guy. Um went about his business off the pitch quietly. On the pitch he was um well we all know. Um, but off the pitch, just a, again, I don't know if it, like, like you're saying just now, I don't know if it's a generational thing with the way these people conducted themselves, but mate, just just a fantastic pro, a great person. I had I had like various chats with him about certain things, and it's an amazing person to approach. Like when you're around so many players of such a high level at that point, yeah dealing with different egos so oh, yeah. it's not they're not all the same so there's some that look at you as as a even though you're playing for the same club they look at you like which is which is correct you're trying to take someone's position or do you know what yeah. i mean so you're almost like a i want to say you're like an opponent really and truthfully. yeah of course sure. with, they, they him, are, yeah. with him he was very open um he was very open um, again you know, fantastic person. Um, yeah. Couldn't couldn't speak highly enough of him, to be honest. Yeah, no, of course. And like I say as well, it's, it's, it's crazy to think that you're saying that he was quite off the pitch because, you know, he did, like I say, he had a lot of red cards and he had a lot of incidents where, you know, you know, he saw red and stuff. So it just goes to show he must have had that, you know, even though he was quite off the pitch, it must have been a bit similar to what you said about, you know, Keown, once, once you step on, once he steps across the white line, Obviously, he just had that. He had that red mist that come down every now and again, but probably made him the player that he was. You know, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely, Pat. Fantastic, fantastic player. Right, no arguments for that one, and certainly no arguments from me personally on on the on your second centre midfielder. For me, oh, honestly, I think he's probably one of the highest assist holders of the Premier League. Uh, in the Premier League era, Cesc Fabregas. Um, like I say, there's not really too much you can say in terms of. You know, even our younger viewers would have seen him uh, in his yeah. twilight years. Um, you know, you would have played it with him. You would have obviously been there when, when he came over from Arsenal, right? Yeah, so it's a funny story, really. So we, he came over. Oops, sorry, one second. He came over. Yeah. And uh, um, I remember we were chosen to train with the first team. This was pretty early on in the 03, 04 season. Yeah. And um, he was in the locker room before me. So I've come in. That's um, the American in you come out there, by the way, isn't it? Locker room. That's the, that's the Yankee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Changing room, locker room, mate. Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're in, we're, in the, we're in the changing room, locker room, and uh, it's everyone else's day off, but we've been called back in. Now, gone in there, and they didn't tell us why we were called in. So we've gone in, and we're both talking. I'm trying to speak to him. He speaks Spanish. There's no English. And um, he's uh, he's like, 
basically uh, using body language like do you know i was i was like no liam brady came in and was like uh sesk ryan ryan sesk you both trained with the first team um yeah enjoy so then we're sitting there we're like oh my god so my heart's pounding i'm thinking it's the first time i'm going to train with the first team it's it, it's our most successful period as a football club yeah um, and i'm going to be training with all these legends yeah. Um, and had you seen? Had you seen? Had you seen? Seth, like Fabric, had you seen Fabregas no. play at this stage? No, no, no. no. Yeah. But after that training session, I knew. <laughs> so we, we, so we're, we're there, we're there, and I'm thinking, I hope this Spanish lad's going to do okay. This could be the, it can make or break you. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I suppose you're probably looking. You're probably in the dressing room. Like, you know, I say you've not seen him play. You're about to go out and train with, you know, arguably the best probably Premier League team ever, you know, certainly, you know, the Invincibles or whatever they were, and certainly yeah. the top, 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 top three teams. And yeah, you're probably looking at, you know, the Spanish boy, like, five at six, five at seven, whatever he is, you know, you're probably scrawny about them as well, thinking, like, yeah. oh, God, like is he going to be all right? <laughs> exactly, exactly, because I'm one of those, like, I'm nervous before a game, as soon as I step outside, it's gone. It's gone, yeah. But I'm thinking of him, I'm thinking, no, can't speak the language. He's um, more worried about him than yourself. Yeah, I was thinking, I hope he's going to be all right. Mate, he bossed the session. No way. And we've got, you've got people like, the whole team, like Vieira, this one, that one, Henri. It's just, it's just, and he was so calm. And I was just like, wow, like, this is another one. We've got another one here. It's just a joke. Just no a joke. way. And he'd have only been, what, 16 then? Yeah, we are both 16. Um, at that point, we would have been... Yeah, like right. 15 and a half. Wow. How'd you do? Wait, 15 and a half? Hang on. <laughs> no, it would have been, sorry, 16 and a half, both of us, yeah. How'd you do? Uh, I did well, to be fair. <laughs> I did well. And I, I think, I think that's, why, I I think that's that. why it led on. It led on to us playing like reserves and then first. Yeah, of course, yeah. Because like, didn't he, 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 I mean, he made his debut when he was like, um, like I think he was like one of the youngest players, he was like 16, so he did. Yeah, we played, we both made our debut in the same game. Oh, same game, yeah. Because I remember it. Yeah, I think you didn't you like beat you? Was it? I can't remember. You, you won Rotherham. Quite a bit, Rotherham. Rotherham. That's it. Yeah, I remember yeah. it. I remember that. Yeah, I remember it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good memories, mate. Oh, I bet. I bet, mate. And yeah, to be fair, like you said, you've already answered my question. Like, I had down there really. Like, obviously, you know, he's gone on to be probably like I say one of the best. Won everything. Everything to win. Won. You know, absolutely done everything in the game. One of the best midfielders, you know, of this generation. Well, yeah, you, know, you, you you answered it there. Really, you said you knew from the first training session. You know, you're obviously not surprised that he's gone on to the heights that he went on to. Yeah, 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 fantastic player. He's one of the he's one uh, one of those players in the team that are currently still playing, and and everybody knows about him. So there's not too much more I can add. Much more you can add, no, exactly. No, that's fine. That's the great story there about the uh, uh, yeah going out to training. That's class, class stuff, mate. Uh, right, wide players. Wow, you have got right. This is going to be interesting, actually, because I'm I'll come in for some stick and I'll explain about that in a minute. Your wide players are Adam Lallana and James Milner. So we'll start with Adam Lallana. Right, Adam at Southampton. I joined Southampton, and I knew these lads before. To be fair, because we've got a lot of mutual friends and what have you. But Adam was a player for me that, as soon as I got there, um, I realised that he was the one that was probably going to kick on the most. Um, Southampton were in a difficult period as well at that point. Um, they had like a, a lot of bad results, but a lot of talent in the team. And it was a very young team as well. Um, but Adam was, I mean, left foot, right foot. I mean, yeah, like in terms of ability from an English player that I've seen, um, he's right up there, yeah. right up there. So I, I, can't, I can't think of any sort of weaknesses that he had that I thought mm, maybe not or maybe, like he was no. he was really really good mate really really good player really good yeah no so, listen I've got I've got no argument to that one um, he's one of my sort of favourite players to be fair like just the way he played the game and I was lucky enough to I actually played against him on my debut uh, for Gillingham and uh, yeah like I say he was um, top draw you know like I can still claim to all the lads I coach I'm two footed because I can strike the ball both feet but for me he showed a totally di uh, new different different level to both footed because the way he dribbled with both feet and the way he caught yeah. with both feet. For me, yeah, honestly, I've absolutely no arguments. He's a like a top, top player and I actually got to know him as a fellow and he's a he's a he's a top fellow as well. Um, yeah, he's lovely, yeah. Nice stuff, uh, used to 
yeah, see him out and about and that. And yet, yeah, great guy. I'm, I'm pleased to see he's gone and done so well. And I, I, the reason I say about uh, the stick, because I get stick from my friends, but I always used to lap him up and say, I did him well. So it's good that you put him in the right. back. Yeah. But again, talking about me getting stick from my mates, the other, on the other flank, you have got James Milner. Yeah, so James, all right. So James Milner, we played for England together. Um, and to, to, to be honest, what's, what, I mean, everyone knows this about him anyway, but what impressed me the most about him was he was good at everything, maybe not unreal, but good at everything. But what he had over other players was that his consistency was like, he'd play the same in every game, like seven out of ten, seven yeah. and a half, eight out of ten. Yeah. Um, and he could play in a variety of different positions as well. So I'm throwing him in there because, all right, if you're talking about gifted Ability. players and, and yeah. entertainment, all right, you know, I, I don't want to be disrespectful because he is a very good player, but you'd probably look at, I could have chose Quincy. I could, there's, I could go on and on. But yeah. I'm choosing him because, again, professionalism, the, the versatility that he had, um, and he was he's a very good player. Yeah. So, I mean, you you see it today. You know, yeah, he's still a yeah. I'm still honest, a very mate, good I, I'm, I'm I'm so I'm so glad. Like what you said is 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 perfect for me and satisfying. Because I'll be honest, I'm going to get a lot of grief of my pals here yeah, because he's made it into two of the teams I've done with my friends already. And for me, like I totally agree with everything you just said. Obviously, you'll know better than me. You've seen it in close quarters, but. You know, I, 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 <laughs> the funny story is from my point of view. I got, I, I got drunk a little. Uh, that obviously, can't sound like me, but when I was had a few too many sherbets not so long ago, we were talking about players and stuff, and with my friends and the ones who were there would know exactly what I said and stuff. And what I actually they were talking about, you know, in terms of you know, what means more ability or or your application and stuff like. And you know, I, I, I actually turned around and said someone like a James Milner, you know, like he's not the most gifted player in the world. But, you know, like, yeah. I, I look at myself and think, you know, I put, I put it, I, it probably added a few bits onto it. But I think I said something along the lines of, you know, I was probably more gifted than him, but I didn't really apply myself. But something right. like that. Right. Probably right. not quite, probably not quite correct. It was probably after <laughs> about my 10th final. Yeah. But what I was trying to get at is, you know, he's made the very most of his career. Listen, look, his career speaks for itself and what he's gone on to do. Um, and listen, like you said, he was just, he was decent at everything. But what I'm trying to get at is, you know, someone like him and Lalana. I'm sure Lalana is dedicated to, and he obviously is dedicated because he's got to the top as well. Both playing for the same club now. But I'm saying, in terms of like God-given natural ability, like there's no comparison. I would imagine. And, and you know, yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd agree with that. And and and, but again, like you said, it's it's an example of, you know, all right, cool. This player's got God-given dribbling ability or whatever it may be. And blessed with like these incisive through balls and and what have you, or passing through midfield to forwards, and uh, you know whatever it may be. But he was he was he was good at that stuff. Yeah, he was good, but he just did it so consistently. So consistently, and yeah. that's the difference. That's the difference. Like it's it's no good. Like for me, when, after I got injured. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't sustain a level because my knee just wouldn't allow me to. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't want to tell anyone on any team I joined no. because then they'd be like, well, why are you playing football? Or yeah, why are you, you know, why are you in the starting lineup if you can't yeah. give a hundred percent? I'd give a hundred percent, but yeah. no, listen, to be honest, mate, like the, the way you the way you are the way you answered the question, like, was perfect for me and I'm I'm satisfied with that. My mates would be happy because to be honest, mate, like I've come in for some grief with that, you know, like he's gone on to do all the stuff that he's done and Listen, I've got nothing against James Miller. I think he's great. But basically, the moral of the story is I've got drunk and said that I was better than James Miller, which obviously, clearly, I'm not. Right. <laughs> but no, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't really. But to be honest, the way you've answered that, and I didn't, I didn't prep you before your, 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 uh, your back that up. I didn't mention it. Cause I, was, I was actually keen to see what you said. Cause, like I said, you've played with him yourself and you're certainly you know, better than me. But no, listen, that's, that's, um, that's great. The midfield is a joke. I mean, you could do it as a flat four there. Like I said, Milner can play anywhere. Could even time it up in there to do what you like with that midfield. It's a fantastic midfield four. We will move on now to your front two. Carnu. Remember who they are, first of all. Yeah, Carnu. Um, we'll start with a big man, Carnu. Carnu was a player that like, I'm. 
Brazilian Ronaldo's biggest fan, right? And I remember when he was at Inter Milan, he played with Carnu a few times, and I took an interest in Carnu. I first saw Carnu in um, Olympics '96 in Atlanta, and wow. he was a fantastic player then. I thought tall, you know, great technical ability. It's, you know, it was fantastic player. Did really well, scored goals, and when Ronaldo joined Inter, obviously at that point in, in time, Italian football was on Channel 4. Yeah. And Ronaldo was a major um, attraction for, for broadcast. Yeah, there's, been a, there's been a documentary about that as well, hasn't there? Like, uh, like that was really popular. He used to be on the Sunday and stuff like that. I see, yeah, uh, mate. Yeah. I've seen James uh, Richardson Fernand and, and Lampard talking about that. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah mate. I was, uh, mate, I watched, watched that when it started being broadcast here. But, um, yeah, when Ronaldo joined, um, obviously, the, the focus was on Inter Milan a lot, even though there was the likes of Del Piero, um, yeah. Baggio and whatever. But um, when he played, they played a game, I remember it, mate, against Lecce at home at San Siro. And that's when I really, really took a liking to Kanu and, and, and uh, followed him more closely. So he scored and set up two that game, I think it was, and then... When I played at Arsenal, he was there. So it was, yeah, it was incredible, really, because, you know, someone that I'd, I'd been following, obviously he joined Arsenal in 99 and what have you, and I'd seen him a lot playing for the club as well. But to play with him was amazing, mate. I met up actually with him two and a half months ago. Um, he don't live too far from me. Um, it's just the same person. Like, it's just a, a quiet person. In fact, if anyone, he didn't say anything, really and truthfully. He was just quiet. Really? Just came crazy. in, trained, did well, went on. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> That's crazy. Right my so, like, it must have been an amazing view, right? Like, as a, you know, obviously Arsenal fan. And, like, say, you was a fan of Carnu before you'd obviously got to turn professional or something. Then, like you say, all, all of a sudden you turn up at Arsenal and, and he's there, you know? Must have been, um, must have been, you know, must have been un unbelievable for you to be, you know, training day and day out with players like him. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And what, what was what? What um, I was going to ask when you met him a couple of months ago, as as he aged, because there was always a few question marks on his age, wasn't it? Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's going great. He's going great. Let me put that. Yeah, he's, he's gone great. Yeah, he's gone great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, he's he's all right. He's he's yeah. Again, it's another one. I think the key with all the players that I've chosen as well is a pattern here. They're all really good people. Yeah. Um, you know, just really fantastic person he was, um, and, a, and a really good player. I think underrated, personally, yeah. but a very good player. No, definitely. I always remember. I think it was the actress we got down at Stamford Bridge. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. What a player! I always remember his big size fifteen boots as well. <laughs> uh, no, that's brilliant, mate. And who's going to partner him up front? I'll tell you what. This one surprised me. To be fair, I'm, I'm looking forward to finding out. Sort of where you played with this guy and what, what he was about. I remember him standing in the Premier League. Go on, who is it? Yeah, yeah, Juan Pablo Angel. Okay. Um, we played together in Chivas in the MLS. Um, and again, I repeat myself a lot in this, uh, in this podcast, but amazing professional. One of the best I've seen in terms of professionalism. Um, application uh, again, really close with him even to this day. Okay. Um, he's yeah, like mate, you have to remember at that point when I was there, I think he was like 36, 37. Okay, and no, no word of a lie, he'd do extras after training, he'd be in the gym, he he actually told me a story, actually, that when he went on holiday, I think him and Thierry Henry go to the same place on holiday. Um, they played together at the Red Bulls, New York. Okay. And um, they, they used to go running together. Mate, we're talking about players that have done everything and they've come yes. over to America and everyone thinks they're on a jolly and they're putting it in. So I remember that story and I was like, wow. Um, That's crazy. You know. That yeah, that age, like you, you just think to yourself, like I'm, 
I know players at 25 who've got the cigar room, do you know what I mean? But they're 37, done pretty much everything in the game or been at a great level. And they're, you know, still putting the work in. So he was someone who really impressed me in that sense. Really good finisher, actually. Um, of course, his legs were a little bit gone at that point, you know, with yeah. all due respect. But yeah, not surprised. I'm not surprised if he had Thierry running in down the beach every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not surprised his legs had gone. Yeah. Trying to trying he's, to keep he's up. He's a back in. Like, Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, mate. To be fair. Uh, yeah, I, I, when you said strikers, or when when I had to choose a strikers, I was like, nah, it's got to be him as well. It's no, got it's to be. Because he was Aston Miller who he played for in the Premier League, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did well there, did well there. But in terms of impressing me, because um, yeah. I played with Dion Dublin as well. I mean, there's quite a you know, varying selection of strikers I could have chose, but I like... I really, um, I really enjoyed uh, playing with one and learning from him. Yeah, he stood out. No, it's great, mate. Listen, that that eleven, you know, it's going to take some beating, mate. Some top top players in there, and like you say, you you've obviously gone for a theme of things where you've gone for you know people who uh, made an impact on you, you know, on a personal level as well. So, no, absolutely different class, mate. There's special mention. There's three that you wanted to you sort of add a little mini uh, substitute bench there. Luke Moore, Aaron Lennon, and Quincy Awusu Abay, if I pronounce that correctly. So, if you want to just go yeah, through right. quickly on, on them for it. All right, I'll start. Quincy was uh, another one that made his debut against Rotherham with me and Sesk. And probably, I'm not even going to say probably, the most gifted forward player I've seen at a young age, without a doubt. Really? If you look, on, you look at his clips on YouTube, you'll see why. Um, Luke Moore. Because when I started playing for England, um, or even prior to that, he was the best striker that I'd seen at a young age, yeah. and he was he was a joke. If I'm being honest, like he was he was a joke. Um, yeah. And Aaron Lennon, because I'd never seen someone that small run that quick in my life, mate. <laughs> like, he was he he was rapid, like. Yeah. He always did that same inside touch, touch, and then shift with the outside yeah. of the right, and then cross, and you couldn't stop it. As we all yeah. know, he did it in the Premier League for years. Oh, no. um, so yeah, those players may special mentions for sure. Just a shame he couldn't cross it. No, no, I'm only joking. I want him to. <laughs> I, might, I might get him on there. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, just on that, just on Quincy there, the one you mentioned. Like you said that he, you know, had probably the most ability from the forward. Why do you think? Like, listen, I know he might have gone and done well abroad. So why do you think he never right like, got to the top, top then? Hey, there's, there's, there's so many factors that come into it. I think. Oh, of course, of course, of course. With, with, with him. Um, <sighs> His ability was just, a, mate. It was, it was, it was unreal. But you know, it's just one of those things when you when you're going through your career, you, you go through a lot of mental changes. You go through, ah, of course, yeah, physical injuries, and and you know your your mindset can change or what have you. I, I can't speak for him, but yeah, in course, terms yeah. of in terms of uh, what I did see in terms yeah. of him as a player, yeah. Mate, I, I, an absolute joke. My friends that used to come and watch me loved coming to watch me, but they said he's my, the chosen one. Like he's like <laughs> N Neo from the Matrix. Like, he, mate, oh, it was a joke. Yeah. That good, joke, yeah. yeah. That's crazy, mate. And right, well, it obviously sounds like it'd be a good substitute anyway. So, yeah. Before we go, I've got a few questions for you, right, to finish as well, mate. If you don't mind. Um, right. Just, we'll start off with the. Yeah, I'll start off with the more serious one, then we'll go into the lighter stuff after. We, you spoke there, and it was, like I said, key for people who may be going through injuries at this time uh, and stuff yeah. like that, who've had injuries. You mentioned about your injuries and stuff, and, you know, your career wasn't as long as it probably should have been due to injury, I'm sure. Anyone who knows you knows that. Obviously, anyone who's now watching this, uh, will, will obviously, I just, want, I just wanted you to sort of just uh, elaborate on that, really, and just, you know, what, have you got any advice for anyone who sort of, Who's you know thinking about who's had injuries and stuff, and who's thinking about you know what I'll just you know I'll sack it off because I know obviously me and you do some stuff together now, and we speak about it all the time, and you always speak about how much you miss it and stuff. But 
you got any advice for anyone who's like in like sort of who's had injuries and stuff? I'd say, I'd say pers personally, speaking from my own experience, I'd say because I stopped playing at twenty six, yeah. um, I never envisioned that would happen. You got to remember, you I put in all the graft from plan on my council estate to grassroots to your borough your district then Arsenal what have you West Ham actually first and then Arsenal yeah. um, everything was a build up to wanting to become a professional yeah. you don't know if you're going to do it but you just you hope you know you work hard and what I did along the way was I didn't really focus on anything outside of the game that I really liked I just thought football 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 yeah. all the time which in a way is a is a good thing but you know in hindsight um you got you got to have something there that you you're going to do outside of the game because yeah even if my career went to 35 um i'd still have to plan for what i'm going to do after football now yeah. you know mm -hmm. these players that are earning mega money um, even they have to think like that. They're all right, don't get me yeah. wrong, but what are you going to do? Sit around all the time. Yeah, no, I'm more for you, like you I, say, your mental, 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 mental health, health, isn't it? For your mental health side of it. In terms exactly. Of that, yeah. I mean, look, we're isolating now, like, no, not even bantering, like, it's, it's tough. So imagine yeah. sitting around all the time. It's just, yeah, you need to do something and it's just good to have a backup plan anyway because I'm a prime example, a case study, if you, if you like, of, you know, someone who... Um, got injured um and had to sort of rebuild my life to be honest yeah. um so i'd focus on education massively if you you know there's online stuff you can do there's there's a lot of stuff you can do and read a lot of people don't really read that much i, yeah. I reckon young people um and that's more of a thing that we used to, we we did when we was young i still continue to do but just build your knowledge um yeah. things like that i just think it's very important yeah, no, that's great, mate. And uh, I totally agree with, with that, obviously, uh, uh, in terms of similar to, to myself, really, in, in that sense. Uh, right, yeah. oh, back to your team. Skipper got to be Vieira, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah there's no Pat, doubt. Pat's got the art, man. No one's getting that off him. Right, in terms of, just quickly, one, we spoke about all the players you played uh, with, obviously, unbelievable team you've got there. What about play, one player you played against? Just one player you thought, what's the player? One player I played against. Comes to your head uh, quickly. First one that comes to your head, you think, right, yeah, he was a go. I'd say Ryan Babble. Ryan Babble, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Ryan Babble. Yeah. Back come just yeah. what? Pace? Uh, pace, the right level of arrogance, um, ability. Yeah, we both scored in the same game. We played Holland. Um, okay. And he scored two, and then I think it was Huddleston scored for us, and then I scored the equaliser in the 90th minute. But in that game, he was, yeah, that was 2001, mate. And I realised then, yeah, this boy is a player. Cool. That is good enough for me. Ryan Babble, remember him running down Anfield, causing havoc? I could, I could, I could say Skulls and them as well, but. I want to go for people that people wouldn't necessarily think. Yeah, yeah, something, I mean. yeah, outside the box. Yeah, listen, Paul Scholes, probably one of my favourite ever players. So, yeah. Where did yeah. you play against Scholes? Just quickly, because I can't really not mention uh, in a, Here, in the FA Cup for Southampton uh, and against United in the uh, uh, pre-season game in the MLS. And we beat them, actually. First American team to, to no beat way. them. That is yeah. class, mate. Uh, and like I say... You know, you say you're retired at 26, had to stop playing, but you managed to obviously squeeze in. Uh, you know, people would love to have that as a full career, let alone, you know, retirement at 26. That leads me on. You're talking about the USA. I was going to ask about, like, how did that move come about? Uh, it came about through my friend Ryan, who you know. Um, yeah. And, yeah, it, it, to be honest, it happened really quickly, but I was at Palace. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I think I was coming, I was playing in an era where some people say I was ahead of my time in the way that I played. Yeah. And um, I think 
in that particular moment, um, I had enough of English football, especially below the sort of Premier League level. No disrespect to anyone. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I just, I was like, I need a change. I need to just get away. And uh, luckily, uh, an American side were interested and they came over when I played for Palace and we had a meeting afterwards. And, and uh, yeah, the, the rest is history. I went out there in... in January 2010, um, and didn't look back, mate. Really enjoyed it. So Ryan was the one that set that up. So. Oh, perfect, mate. Right, that's all the serious stuff out of the way. Please, 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 please. You told me, because obviously, got all the serious stuff out of the way for all our youngsters listening and stuff. But we always like to try and get a little story out of someone. There's one that you told me the other uh, week. I'm sure you'll remember it without ruining it. Please, 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 please tell us a story about when you went to the States, you was on pre-season, and you went for an ice bath. Ian Walker. I'm not, do you know what? Oh, okay, okay. I've got another one. I've got another one. Go on, go on. Tell us. I want, I want to hear the ice bath. Come on, tell uh, us. You're out in the States. So, in, in the Home Depot Centre where... Uh, it's like a big facility. It's not just a stadium. So there's tennis courts, right? There's football pitches, there's there's NFL training centre. I mean, it's, it's incredible. So the locker rooms, the changing rooms, are right next to each other. So we had like one side and they had another side. Separated, but right next to each other. Yeah. And um, after training, I got in a nice bar. Um, and it was outside our locker room. There's another ice bar next to me, excuse me. And um, I mean, it was a most random thing I've ever seen in my life but I'm sitting there in the ice bath freezing myself to death and David Beckham comes out and he gets in the one next to me um, and I'm like <laughs> I'm looking like is this is this happening uh, mate no honestly we, 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 we spoke I think we shivered and spoke for about 10 minutes mate like it was it was it was really, really uh, random, but a great experience. And it's just funny because if I if I tell that to people, they probably won't believe me. But <laughs> I know, I, obviously, I, I I was I was there. I, it happened to me. But it's just like it's so random, so random. Um, yeah, mate, crazy. <laughs> crazy. No, nah, listen, mate, that's absolutely different. I think you've done. Listen, to be honest, mate, as well, I can't believe you only done 10 minutes, mate. If Beckham, Beck's got in there and me, I'd probably still be in there now, to be honest. He was drinking after as well. He was what? <laughs> no, I'm joking. I was saying he was drinking drinking the water after as well. No. He, <laughs> mate, to be fair, he was in there. He was in there up until, he must have done about 20 minutes. Like he's a very, Apparently, he's very professional as well. So. Yeah, cool. And what was he like? What was he like as a guy? Can you remember really what he spoke about or anything? Or? Uh... We were just speaking about the standard of the, of the football out there. Um, yeah. I was asking him how he finds it, how he deals with it, with the level of fame. Uh, yeah. yeah, just 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 talking about favourite players and whatever. I remember speaking yeah. to him about no, that. Class, um, mate. What was the other one you were yeah. going to say then? Ian, did you say Walker? No, Ian Walker. So when I joined Kansas, um, yeah. <laughs> he was on trial there. But, mate, it's so funny. Like, he, he was pretty much on a jolly. He was on a yeah. bit of a jolly, but um, hilarious. Still there, right? There is still there, man. We went to the strip and laughed his face. But it laughed pretty It's got a bit funny, mate. Is that your end or mine? Um, yeah. I'm still here, but you've just frozen a little bit. I don't know if that's my connection or yours. Yeah, it's freezing a little bit, mate, to be fair. But um it got you back but yeah, so Ian Walker, that's that story, mate. Hilarious. I had a good time with him. He didn't sign, but it's good to meet him and, and train with him and uh, get to know him as well. He actually told me that he left his BMW five series in the airport and just didn't go back to get it, just left it there. <laughs> So he's, uh, his, 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 his time in America was short-lived then, yeah? Short-lived, yeah. It didn't stay long. <laughs> now, <laughs> listen, mate. Right, that is absolutely perfect. I'm going uh, to head off before the uh, connection completely goes, mate. 
thanks very much for your time today. And no honestly, mate, really, really enjoyed that. And it's a top team, and you know, it's three you should be proud of. And thanks for all the advice for the, for the younger listeners uh, tuning in. Thank you, mate. Thank you for the no, platform. Mate, we'll stop that now. Yeah!